YouTube is massive. The number three website in the world, number two search engine, and the number one video streaming service. And with Google's unlimited resources backing it, why is it still so slow? This brawl with the buffer bar can be very frustrating, but it can be beaten. So let's peek under the hood of what makes YouTube tick and see if we can diagnose the problem and unleash the speed. Videos and digital media stored on computers are measured in bytes. The larger the file, the larger the byte count. Text documents take only kilobytes of data, but HD movies can take up to several gigabytes of data. So considering that YouTube hosts more HD videos than any other site on the internet, you can imagine how many computers Google needs to store them all. But how do these videos get from their computers to yours? Well, each byte of data is converted to what's called a bit and then transferred over the internet. The speed at which bits are sent is known as a bit rate. And by going to sites like speedtest.net, you can calculate the maximum bit rate that your internet supports. But isn't transferring files from one computer to another called uploading or downloading? So what's streaming then? Essentially, it's the act of playing back an item as it's being downloaded. And streaming programs generally download several bits ahead of what you're trying to play to ensure continuous playback. This is known as the buffer. And when a video stops for buffering, it means that what you're trying to play has caught up with the amount of bits that you've downloaded, and you need more buffer space before you can continue. To see how fast your videos are loading, you can right click on any YouTube video and select Stats for Nerds. This tells you the kilobytes per second that you're getting for that video. If it's in the low hundreds and your video keeps pausing, then you can reduce the amount of bits that need to be loaded for the video by lowering the video quality. Selecting 144p or so reduces the overall video size, meaning that less bits have to be loaded. You can also check out YouTube Feather, which is a service intended for slower internet connections. But the speed of your internet connection is only half the issue. Streaming speed also relies on YouTube's internet speed as well. But as you can imagine, YouTube probably has the fastest internet possible. But just like a freeway, when you have millions of people each second trying to stream the exact same files at the exact same time, you can see how much slower this can make things. To resolve this, YouTube employs computers in different locations called Content Delivery Networks, or CDNs. The sole purpose of these computers is to store copies of YouTube's most commonly accessed files, known as a cache. So whenever you go to play a YouTube video, instead of fighting to access YouTube's main computers, they route you to the closest CDN based on your IP address. However, CDNs can get hit pretty hard too. But if YouTube automatically routes you based on your IP address, how can you choose a different CDN? by tricking YouTube servers. One way to do this is by adding one of these at the end of your URL. This tells YouTube that you're trying to access content from one of these countries and that they should route you accordingly. But this doesn't always make things faster. Another solution is to fake your IP address by making it look like you're accessing YouTube from another location. This can be achieved by using a virtual private network, which essentially connects you to another computer in another location and makes it appear as though your IP address is that of the other computer. A good freemium VPN service to try this out is CyberGhost, found at this website. Hopefully one of these options will work for you and the buffer bar will be no more. If you have any more tips about speeding up YouTube videos, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Click here to see last week's video and comments show, and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these videos. Also be sure to check me out on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. Until next time, hack to learn. Don't learn to hack.